Hello chemists and welcome to this episode of Bales Chemistry. Today we're going to have a look at titration calculations. We're going to look at a simple titration and then we're going to look at a more complicated back titration. If you're enjoying this video, why not hit the like button below? So, first of all, what is a titration? A titration measures how many moles of solution of a known concentration is required to neutralize a solution of an unknown concentration. We repeat this process until we have about three concordant results, and these are the results which are within 0.1 centimeters cubed of each other. We need to make sure we're dealing with the correct volumes. Everything we do in the lab is usually measured in centimeters cubed, and we need to convert it into decimeters cubed by dividing it by a thousand. So if we take an example set of results from a titration, you can see we started out with a rough run and improved as we went on. We can identify the three concordant results as they're within 0.1 of each other, and then we can use those to calculate the mean. In some type exam questions, we only get given two concordant results. It's important that we make sure that we only use concordant results in calculating the mean tighter values. So if we use the mean title results calculated from the previous slide and look at this example where we're asked to calculate the concentration of 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide that is neutralized by 13.55 centimeters cubed of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid. The first thing we'll do is write out the equation and we'll look at the reacting ratios between the sodium hydroxide and the hydrochloric acid. We can see here that it's one to one. So we'll look at the calculation for this titration. The first thing we'll do is we'll work out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, our known solution. To do this, I use the equation number of moles equals volume divided by a thousand multiplied by concentration. I've divided volume by a thousand because I'm going from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed. I'll then put the numbers in, so I've now got 0 0.01355 multiplied by 0 0.1. This gives me 0 0.001355 moles of hydrochloric acid. If you remember from the previous slide, the number of moles of hydrochloric acid will equal the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So I can now go on to calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide, our unknown concentration. To do this, I'll use the equation concentration equals number of moles divided by volume, which is also divided by a thousand. The reason why I'm dividing volume by a thousand again is I'm going from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed. I'll put the numbers in. I've got 0.001355, which is the number of moles from the previous calculation, divided by 0.025, which is the volume of sodium hydroxide. This equals 0.0542 moles per decimeter cubed. In a back titration, we first react an excess of acid or base with an unknown. We then calculate the remaining acid or base using a titration and then use this information to calculate how much of the unknown we had, often as a percentage purity calculation. So if we consider this example of a back titration where 10 grams of impure calcium carbonate was reacted with an excess of hydrochloric acid, that unreacted hydrochloric acid was then neutralized with sodium hydroxide, and we're asked to calculate the percentage purity of the sample, we can break it down into four steps. In step one, we need to calculate the moles of unreacted hydrochloric acid using the titration data given in the question. In step two, we need to calculate the moles of reacted hydrochloric acid by working out the number of moles you started with and the number of moles you have remaining. In step three, you're going to calculate the moles of pure calcium carbonate by looking at the reaction stoichiometry. And in step four, you're going to calculate the percentage purity of the sample. So we'll start off by working out the number of moles of unreacted hydrochloric acid. To do this, we'll look at the moles of sodium hydroxide using the titration. And we'll use the equation number of moles equals volume divided by a thousand multiplied by concentration. This is exactly the same as the equation that we used in the earlier example. We'll plug the numbers in and we'll calculate that there's 0.072 moles of sodium hydroxide used. We know that the number of moles of sodium hydroxide equals the number of moles of hydrochloric acid because of the reacting equation. So therefore, the number of moles of hydrochloric acid unreacted will be 0.072 moles. We'll now look at the moles of reacted hydrochloric acid. To do this, we'll calculate the moles of hydrochloric acid in excess at the beginning of the question. We'll use the same equation as before, and we'll plug the numbers in to find there was 0.2 moles of hydrochloric acid before it reacted with any calcium carbonate. In the next step, we'll work out how many moles actually reacted with the calcium carbonate in the sample. To do this, we'll take the starting moles of hydrochloric acid, the one we just calculated, and we'll take away the remaining moles of hydrochloric acid from the previous slide. This will give us the number of moles that reacted with the hydrochloric acid overall. Now we have the moles of reacted hydrochloric acid, we need to work out the moles of calcium carbonate that reacted with it. To do this, we'll look at the chemical equation and we'll see that two hydrochloric acids react with every one calcium carbonate. So we need to take the reacted moles of hydrochloric acid and divide it by two. This gives us 0.064 moles of calcium carbonate. We're then going to turn this into a mass of calcium carbonate by multiplying that by its molecular mass. Its molecular mass is 100 and that gives us 6.4 grams. 
In the final step of our question, we're going to calculate the percentage purity. We're going to use the equation for percentage purity, which is pure mass divided by total mass multiplied by 100. We'll then plug in the numbers to find that the percentage purity of this sample is 64%. Hope you found that video useful and you can now understand how to calculate titrations and back titrations. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you like this video. Thanks and have a great day.